right, everybody. Stan Smith from Iron Sharp K9. Did you think you did enough with your dog? Did you get into a new situation and your dog had no clue of what they were supposed to do? That's what happened with Denver here. They took him out a lot as a young puppy. They explored, they did different stuff, but they did not do elevators. So when he sees an elevator, he freaks out. Have you ever freaked out when you got into a new situation? So you can relate to the fear that this dog has. So we're gonna overcome it. We're gonna teach him that if we're saying, hey, we can do this, he can do it. And it's all about building confidence in yourself that you're gonna put your dog in the best case scenarios. So stay tuned. I do whenever I get into a new area is I allow the dog to walk around and sniff because I want him to explore. I want him to find out on his own that there's nothing to be worried about. And then every so often when he checks in with me, I will reward him. Good. So he's getting something out of it. You want to make sure you use what your dog likes. So if your dog is a real big foodie, reward them with food. If they like toys and tugs, use those things. Use what motivates your dog to overcome their fear. You can see his body language. He's very stiff. His tail's not wagging. His ears are pinned back. This is a nervous, timid dog right now. And we want to try to get him a little excited. Yes. Good job. To come out of his shell. And it's a process. It's not going to be a, oh, we're going to do this one time and it's going to be fixed. This is something you're going to have to constantly do. And this shows the dog that I'm not going to allow you to be a bum. Come on, pup. Good job. So now he's already, his tail came out just a little bit. It's not completely tucked, but this is already better than he normally acts at elevators. So he was walking up to it. He hadn't sprawled out. I don't think he realizes what it is just yet, but this is good. So he's investigating. And again, I don't want to force him. I'm not correcting him. There's not tension on the leash. And I'm staying relaxed because if you get nervous, if you get tense, it's just going to go right down to that leash. Good boy, Denver. Yes. One way to gauge how nervous your dog is, are they taking treats? If a dog is too nervous, if a dog is too fearful, they're going to not take those treats for whatever reason. Ready? So now, we're going to call the elevator. Good he's still pretty comfortable, and he's waiting. And he's waiting. And here it comes. Let's go down. Come on. Good job. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, sir. Good job. Yes. So just like we said earlier, you just saw him take the treats 10 seconds ago, but now he's in the elevator and now he wants nothing to do with these treats. And he's also trying to get real low to the ground. He's trying to find that security. <laughs> Good boy, Denver. And we're going to praise him for doing this. That's what I'm, we're going to praise him, reward him, because he's not freaking out. This isn't the ideal behavior we're looking for, but this is better than him trying to panic and get out of the situation. Good boy, you take it this floor. Look. So now the elevator door is about to open, and we're going to release him with free. There you go. When you put your dog in stressful situations, you want to make sure you relieve that stress as well. And that's where we're giving him that free cue. The last couple of times when he opened the door, he was like, bam, trying to get out. And that is dangerous because if there's somebody on the outside of that elevator who is afraid, or it could be a busy street just like this. And if he pulls out, gets out of the leash, he can get hit by a car. So we want to build the dog's confidence that they're waiting on cues from us that we're not going to put them in a situation that they're not going to be successful. Now we're gonna walk him around, let him sniff out here, pee on some stuff, decompress, and then we're gonna come back and do it again. So Denver's already a nervous dog, so I don't wanna put a prong collar on him or anything that's real abrasive because I don't wanna shut him down. So that's why one reason we're using the slip lead. It's enough to give communication you need it. Sit. But it's not gonna be something that shuts him down. He's already fearful, so if we put more pressure on him than he's needed, he's just gonna completely shut down and we're not gonna get the results that we're wanting. So proper use of equipment in the right situation is important, people. You don't always have to go to the extreme. Let's go, Dan. Yes, sir. 
doing right now is I'm taking his mind off of that stressful experience. We're just doing a couple of obedience cues. And I want him to understand that regardless of where we're at, there's no need to be stressed. There's no need to be so worried about what's going on because we're together. And that's what you want, your dog to trust you people. And then building the bond and taking care of your dog, you're gonna get this type of relationship. You ready to go overcome more fears? You ready? All right, he's ready. All right, so now I'm gonna hand the leash to Jamarcus, and he's gonna walk him through it. <laughs> Denver on me. Come on, Denver Nugget. Come on, Denver Nugget. <laughs> Denver Nugget. All right, so he does not know Jamarcus, but we want him to understand that if he sees an elevator, there's nothing to be worried about. So what Jamarcus is doing here is he's letting him know that he has something good for him using that high-value treat reward. Just some basic obedience commands. Nothing too crazy, people. Nothing too crazy. He's just trying to build a little bit of a relationship. And he's performing very well. This is what we like to see. Good boy, Dan. Good, Good job. Denver. Good job. And he's doing some basic obedience right in front of the elevator. And he he spotted the elevator now. Let's see what happens. There we go. He didn't tower yet. There he's starting. And he walks him through it and he comes in. And again, he's not completely comfortable. We don't need him to be 100% comfortable. We just need him not to cause a scene whenever he sees an elevator. He did take the treat too this time. Last time he did. And he took the treat when he came in. So this is progress. And whenever you're working with your dog, it's going to be small things like, oh, he didn't treat treat last time? This time he did. And this is a win for him. And we just want to re reassure him, comfort him, let him know this is good. He's not getting good. Out. There he goes, and this is what we're looking for. Oh boy, Denver. This is exactly what we're looking for. And again, he's not completely comfortable, tail still tucked a little, but he's not sprawling trying to get out of the situation. He knows that I have to work my way through it, and this is what you want. You have to build the dog's desire to want to work through things and not just simply quit. So we're going to another elevator with Jamarcus, and again, he's going to do some obedience out in front. Getting his mindset off of being terrified. He did it. Now he's going to the elevator again. All right, so Jamarcus, see, see if he'll go in first this time. You want me to throw some treats in there? Yeah, you can. See if he'll go in for that. And we want to see is he going just because he's following us, or is he making a conscious decision to go in right now? Where are these, man? Where did you get these? Full moon Amazon. Full moon on Amazon. Full moon. Yeah, I love I love them treats. Yeah. I gotta yeah, I gotta order some of these. They're meaty. They have scent, and these are all the things that you're looking for. Oh wait, hold on. Look. Oh, there we go. <laughs> he did it on his own. <laughs> and he greeted the stranger. Come <laughs> oh, on. This is what we're looking for. This is success. Oh, this is positive. Good job. Come on. Yeah, we wanted to see if he was going to come in on his own, and he did exactly that. Sorry, excuse us. <laughs> this is live. I love puppies. There we go. There we go. Free! And when you tell him free, give him that release. Good boy! And this is something that we stress to people all the time. If your dog performs the action, stop while you are ahead. So I don't think we should really put any yeah. more pressure on him. Walk back up the stairs or take the elevator back I, I up? I think we take the elevator up back up one more time. Sure. And then we're going to put him up and let him get a break. Yeah. Look at him. He's comfortable. He's not sprawling out. He's oh going in on his own. This is what we like to see, people. Oh, boy. When you put in the time with these dogs, man, they're never going to be perfect. You're always going to be working on something. But when the dog makes success and they make strides in the right direction, this feels good. <laughs> Come on. And this is what we're wanting to see. Second. He's tolerating it. He's not super comfortable. He doesn't want to be here. But even with the door opening, he's not freaking out. He's Freak. waiting. On his hand, though, he's like, oh, we're done? Freak. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we're looking for, Never. people. A successful dog going through, overcoming his fears. Oh. Alright people, so you just saw him go through a couple sessions with me, a couple with Jamarcus, and he ended on a very, very, very successful note. And his, even his body language is a little bit more comfortable when he's walking around. <laughs> 
He's not as nervous as he was, and if you put your dog in situations where they have to overcome their fear, they actually gain confidence, and they're not gonna be so worried about everything. So get your dog out, expose them to as much situations as you can, but you always wanna leave them on a successful note. Do not push your dog more than they have to to get that small goal. And remember, small goals are gonna get that big win at the end of the day. And as always, people, just take care of your dog.